Hey everyone, my name is Adam Archer, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Smith and Wesson 1600 Extractor. So this is a knife that I have never seen here on YouTube, although I have seen copies of it. Um, and you may recognize this knife from my videos, although it is not this actual knife you have seen. It has been the Rob Dalton Cupid. And you guys know I really like Let's make it so you can actually see. There you go. And you guys know I really like Rob Dalton Automatics. Um, this is kind of known as the um, the Joker knife because the Joker or this knife was in the movie The Dark Knight. It was used in I believe it was the ballroom or the party scene of the Dark Knight movie um, by the Joker. So I'm not going to say one of these companies, um, whether that's Rob Dalton or Smith & Wesson, copied this or either knife, um, but they are very, very similar. So let's take a look at the Smith & Wesson. We'll take a look at the box first as well, and then look at the knife itself. Um, I do want to kind of show as much as I can since I have not seen this knife on here previously. So as most of the... Um, old Smith & Wesson automatics. I believe these were made in the 90s. They came in a blue box. So you have Smith & Wesson law, Enfor or, yeah, law Enforcement Military. You have the Smith & Wesson logo there. You have Smith & Wesson uh, manufactured by Taylor Cutlery. Taylor Cutlery is the same company that made like Schrade knives, old, um, old Timer, and some of those I don't believe Taylor Cutlery is actually around anymore because they were purchased by another company. Then you have um, official license of Smith & Wesson Corp. And you have a little logo right here saying Made in USA. On this side you have Arm Force Only. Of course that was really just a branding thing. You didn't have to be law enforcement to own these knives. And of course here you have the model number and the barcode. So this is SW1600B. And the B is really the um, out the front model. I believe they have it, had an A, which was a side opening automatic. So when we open this box, we have the little papers that this was in. So this would be folded up in kind of a wax paper. And it said Smith & Wesson made in USA on this little gold sticker. We have a little caution paper. Basically says don't open this when it's pushed against your body because it will cut you. That doesn't say exactly that, but you can read it. If you can read English, that is. And we have what's supposed to actually be attached to this knife, but I removed the safety button. You can see there. And the red velvet on the inside of the case or inside the box. So, you may be asking, why did I remove this safety button from the knife? Doesn't that make it more dangerous? And you would be correct in saying that it would be a little bit more dangerous. However, uh, the downside about this particular knife is that when you pulled the lever down all the way, it would not actually lock in the closed position unless you put the safety on, versus actually having the button hold the knife closed. So remove the or remove the safety. It now locks in the closed position when the button is not compressed like it should. I could probably go and modify this or use like a file or something to make this lock in the closed position and then be able to use the safety. But I don't really want to modify this knife as they are somewhat rare now. I don't know if I've already said this. This was one of the last models made by Smith & Wesson before they discontinued their automatic line, so there haven't been a huge amount of these made. I did pay somewhat of a premium for this knife. Um, I probably paid more than I should have, but I purchased it at the uh, Knob Creek Machine Gun Shoot. It is somewhat of a knife that I've been wanting since I already do own the Dalton um, Cupid. Uh, well, two of them. So I've kind of been wanting this knife, so I picked it up when I saw it. And it's not a knife you see very often. So 
It has T6 aluminum handles with a black anodized finish. It has a serial number at the bottom here. On the reverse side, you have a pocket clip that says Smith & Wesson USA, and in no way is a low carry pocket clip. As you can see, all of that would be sticking out of your pocket. And of course, I'm five and a half minutes in and I haven't even opened up the knife, so I know I'm going to be lots of dislikes for that, but let's press the button on the handle, and we open up the blade. That is a 440C stainless steel blade with the Smith & Wesson logo on it. Just make sure you guys can see that. And one of the things is with this knife that I try not to open and close it too much because it actually scratches the blade slightly and removes that Smith & Wesson logo when you do open it. So you can see slight scratches up here and probably a wearing of that Smith & Wesson logo. So I do try to avoid that as much as possible. I mostly keep this knife in a display case. As I did say, this is a 440C stainless steel. It is double edge. Um, I did not actually take measurements of the blade, but I guesstimate maybe, uh, let's grab a ruler and say, because I don't want to guesstimate wrong and somebody goes out, buys this knife, wears it around, finds out it's too long for their state and then they get arrested and blame me. It is a three and three fourths inch long blade, although the actual cutting length is about three, no, almost three and a half inch. Well, yeah, I'd say three and a half inch long cutting length. Um, the fit and finish of this knife is definitely not as good as the Rob Dalton's. You have a lot of blade play in there versus this where you have very slight. Absolutely no this way, but up and down you have slight. But with this you have some in all directions. So kind of how this um, knife, uh, well, let's look at the back of the blade. You can see it has a little bit of a circle right there and it is um, completely milled out in the center. And that's because that is how the button actually catches. So the button slides up through the center and then latches on right there, right in the middle. And that is on all the Rob Dalton autos as well, or Rob Dalton Cupids. So kind of a unique feature of these knives. Um, there have been some models modern interpretations of this knife. Um, there's a lot of Chinese copies of especially the Smith & Wesson Extractor. Um, it's just been a very copied knife as well as there's some versions of this that are side openers. But um, just want to show you guys this knife. There wasn't too much to talk about especially since um, I had not seen this here on YouTube. So let's take a look at it opening again. Pretty strong, has a nice firing action. This, of course, is called a single action out the front because you uh, press the button, it fires out, and you don't like pull a lever to uh, retract it back in. You actually have to press the firing button and then pull it back in, just like that. And in normal circumstances, once you pull it back in, you could push a button right in here and it would lock this little safety pin down so that when you press this, it would not fire the knife. Another interesting feature is that it uses, uh, or it does not use Torx screws. It uses hex. I don't know if you guys can even see that. I guess the light is a little bit shining right here. So it actually uses hex throughout the whole body rather than torques, which is 
somewhat uncommon for knives. But there you go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Um, that's really all I have to say about the Smith & Wesson 1600B extractor. Definitely a neat knife for my collection, even if I did overpay for it. It definitely matches up with my Cupid's. And since I did not fire the Cupid kind of compared to this, I thought I should probably do that now to kind of show the strength difference. So the Cupid, and then the Smith & Wesson. There you go. Definitely if you have these knives side by side, I would recommend going with the Cupid. Um, you have Beth much better milling on here, hard anodized coating rather than a more of, I don't know if it's called a soft anodization, but it is a much, uh, it feels like a coating rather than a anodization. Um, on the back, see, the Dalton has what I consider a better pocket clip. It's a lower carry. Um, anyways, I don't want to compare everything about them. But, um, let's see, is there anything I didn't mention? Not really. Um, the coating, or the finish on the blade, I don't even know what I would consider that. Um, kind of a satin. Stone, well, it's like a satin with a little bit of a stone wash. Yeah. Kind of have to look closely for that. I don't know. Anyways, I'm talking, I'm rambling a little bit too much. Um, sometimes I just get so interested in knives that I just stare at it and don't talk for a while, which is really not good for video. So I should leave, let you guys get back to your lives, or watch more of my videos in case you want to do that. Um, anyways, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Have a great day.